Hi, it's the 23rd of January 2015. Um, as, as this week goes on, uh, we know that over in uh, Sweden, Davos is taking place 2015, the World Economic Forum. And two of the main criteria that Davos will be discussing, uh, as well as other things such as technological advancement and how that's going to take uh, effect more as we advance in the future uh, and the implications with regards to that. But what I personally wanted to talk to you guys about more is how climate and uh, you know capital is affected. Now I, I bet most of you have uh, picked up on the story about the Euro reprinting this week and I wanted to ask you a question uh, with regards to that and that was what is the difference between printing up capital and what eventually happens with regards to inflation and increases in taxes what is the difference between the two because I don't know if you've uh, actually given that any thought I'll tell you what the impl one of the implications of printing up more money is first of all in my view is that it, if you put more of a certain quantity, let's say euros in this incident, uh, and it's not just euros that have been reprinted, I mean the UK have done quantitative easing and so has the United States, but if you print something uh, up and add it to, you know, a system where there's already a lot in there, then, you know, it becomes less valuable because it's more abundant. So it devalues uh, that note, if you like, the euro, for instance. And it, in the end, what it does uh, on an individual uh, level, like on our, our level, personal levels, is it restricts the actual spending ability of that banknote. And that in turn, in my view, is no difference to increasing taxes. Increasing taxes takes money off you directly, but quantitative easing and reprinting of money will take it off you in another way in the fact that it devalues the uh, banknote and the two end up being the same and is the difference right if the governments say t tomorrow that we're going to uh, increase uh, interest rates uh, what will happen is people will get upset about that but they don't seem to mind these um, countries or organisations such as the euro that is part of uh, increasing quantitative easing and yet the both increases of taxes or increases of tr interest rates and quantitative easing achieve the same thing and this is the, the essence of what I wanted to talk to you guys about is, is, is that you've got to keep your eye on these people because they're very shrewd in the way they go about their business because they may as well as just increase taxes or increased interest rates because quantitative easing achieves the same thing it devalues your spending ability if you taxed more you have less money to spend if the interest rates go up you have to fork out more money and still you have left less to spend if they reprint money they hyperinflate the pound or the dollar or the euro and inevitably you have less to spend because that product that you buy say a loaf of bread becomes more dear or you know another way of looking at it is your money goes um, you know you either have less money to spend or your money is just hyperinflated so that you end up spending more to get what you want originally and this is what I mean they're very shrewd in the way they go about their business. Now, climate, we'll leave that alone at that, you know, I, I mean, I don't know if you've actually thought about, you know, this taking, the way they go about when they reintroduce money into the system uh, by print-ups. I mean, that's just, you know, the, the impact, the end impact of what happens with regards to increases in tax, increases in interest rates, and, you know, reprinting of more money. Uh, the economy can be directly affected by climate 
and what I can't believe and I know that they, they know they've got the um, they've got the information I mean if they can put a probe on a moving meteor out in space then they've got some very intelligent people working for them so I I know that they know although they don't seem to want to broadcast the fact that this global warming is a load of bullshit I know that they know that and I know that these departments will have looked into uh, the actual causes of changes in climate and they will you know go straight away to the main source of what it is that causes warmer and colder climates and that will be the source of heat in the first place which is the Sun or our star in our solar system so they know that things like what I've showed you recently such as the 99 year solar cycle uh, repeats itself and that we are on that point in time where it repeats itself they will also know that it's no coincidence that on the north and south pole not only do we have magnetic poles there that we also have arctic uh, climates very cold climates and not only that we have rotational axis and that all three of them are not there for no reason and I know they know that unless you know they've been very naive and now like I say if they can put a, a probe to monitor a meteor uh, on a moving meteor then they're very clever people and they know these things already so why then do they tell the public that they need to reduce CO2 in order to avert the impacts of further global warming when we can see uh, you know that that is not no longer the case it would have been very hard to prove without the grand solar cycle that it was the case if you just looked at the graph um, from the 1900s and we may as well do that so that you can see where I'm coming from here so as I was saying that in the 1980s onwards you would have by you know looking at the sunspot numbers and as the sunspot numbers was increasing uh, you know towards over 150 um, on the counts you would have thought that we would we were experiencing some form of global warming up until 2000 when those numbers started to in my view rapidly drop off now when we look at the grand solar cycle and what we're looking at is is that we can see that there is a pattern that took place in the 17th century for the next near enough 100 years and it did so again in the 18th century for the next 100 years and it did so but not as obvious as it did back in those two previous centuries it did so nevertheless in the 19th century increase or begin a new cycle from 1920 to 2000 from 1820 to 1900 and from 1720 to 1800 these markers down there are the beginnings of the grand cycle which lasts just short of a hundred years and that is if we use the average of 11 year solar cycles some vary and that's why it's an average of 99 years but we can see clearly and this is what I really want to point out here guys we can see that at the beginning of a new grand cycle there is less sunspots and at the end there is less sunspots and in between there is more and in between is where we experience more warmer climates and at the ends is where we experience colder climates now just to prove that point if we go to 1720 on the next graph we can see that we was just short of coming out of the Maunder minimum and as we was coming out of the Maunder minimum it began to warm up as sunspot numbers increased again to prove that point if we look at the 1820s we can see that we was just going into another grand cycle and again lo and behold around 1820 we can see we experience the Dalton minimum and after the 1820 it starts to increase again and get become warmer so both these Dalton minimum and the Maunder minimum were renowned periods of cold temperature 
So what happened then in the 1900s? Well, let me just get that back up. There we go. We can see that it didn't quite reach, you know, a, a minimum state. Let me just sort out a marker. But we can see that at the lowest point of the trough was the beginning of the next solar cycle, the grand cycle. Now, that's no coincidence, guys. That's three occasions, 1720, we're in a cool period, 1820, we're in another cool period, and 1920, we're in the lowest trough again. So, from 1900s all the way up to the present date, we have experienced a warmer temperature. And it's no wonder scientists would believe that we was in a continuing cycle of warming on the globe. And you can see from the 1900s onwards that that seemed to be the case. So in 1960 would have been the peak and we would have been experiencing much more warmer climate than we ever have done in, in the last 300 years. And here's the deal. We can use this to predict we will now experience based on the trends that we've got and the accurate recorded data that we've got what sort of climate we can experience in the next 25 to 30 years and as we are approaching 2020 just like we did 1920 1820 and 1720 we know that we will be going into another grand solar cycle and we will be coming out of at the end of the last grand solar cycle which was beginning in 1900 and ending in 2000. So what we need to do is look at what happened at the end of this cycle here and sort of if we can find what we will be looking for over the next 25 years. So we need something like a pattern to see what happened there. Well we had at the end of the 2000 century, the 19th century sorry, quite a large peak in sunspot numbers and we can see that it's been brought forward on the new graph down here. So what we need to do is look for a comparison then in the history of sunspots going back over the 300 years at least that led to a similar event so that we can therefore have a prediction based on trends that we see of what we could experience over the next 20 to 25 or even 30 years. So we had over a hundred um, sunspot numbers count and it dropped off quite rapidly. Now it doesn't fit uh, in, the 19, in the 18th century and at the end of the 18th century grand solar cycle of a hundred years. It doesn't fit. The peaks are almost the same. However, if we go back to the 17th century, we see something similar. We see a large peak before the end of the grand solar cycle, and therefore we can expect something similar along those lines of what happened in the 1820s. And that was a Dalton minimum. So we are going to be experiencing then a cooler period for the next 25 years. The only other thing I would like to add to this is a migrating magnetic pole. Now as I've said before, we don't have an arctic region, a rotational axis and a magnetic north pole all in the same vicinity for just a coincidental sake. They are all there for a reason. And although science may not know every detail about those three um, and their connection with the same um, areas on the globe, both north and south, we know that they know, we can say that it would be foolish to say that there was just there by coincidence. And the fact is, is that since the 19th century, back here, we have had a magnetic north pole migration. And we can see that it has thrown up a different grand cycle here with regards to not just solar um, numbers but also temperatures. Now I would say the main driver of our solar system is our Sun and that will have ad adverse effects on the rest of the planets within the solar system and I think that 
the correlation between a greater number of sunspots in the 19th century or the grand cycle of the 19th century has led to what we would normally experience on an average year which would look more along the lines of the 18th century grand solar cycle and the 17th century grand solar cycle I would say that it has led to a warmer climate or at least a warmer climate within that period of time and uh, you know I'll, I'm not going to go on too much about this guys because there's quite a lot of information we've talked about the two subjects that will probably be the main focus um, you know with regards to the real Davos information if they was going to be revealing it you know this is what we're looking at and uh, I suppose in the next few videos we should be talking about the effects of a cooler climate because I think the writing is evident on the wall and that is what we're going to be expecting but it is um, you know what the, the point of doing this video was to bring it to your attention of how you know crafty uh, these world organizations are and you know they don't necessarily tell us uh, you know what to expect uh, for the reason as they want to give us an ABC choice and you know at the end of the day they have you know uh, selected the ABC choices because ABC all favors them at the end of the day you know if we they don't we don't get to choose what A and what B and what C will be we will just be given the choice of A B and C and uh, it's it's sneaky and you see it a lot and you know I think people should be aware of what is actually taking place as opposed to what is taking place that they're trying to push out they're trying to say to us is that this is a global warming event and we can tax you for it through carbon emissions and it's um, it's, it's fraud and deception to say the least it really is I don't want to babble on I feel like I have over the last few minutes and but I, I just hope that I have you know brought this trend out a little bit more um, you know and made it a little bit more explainable to you so you can understand it and uh, you know when I'm talking about the ABC choice as well they use it um, in manipulating currencies and we can see the ABC in choice uh, is quite clear when they give us an option do you want to raise taxes no we don't well, what about if we put interest rates up? well no we don't want that either because you know we'll lose our property so they have to come up with another way of stacking the deal and that is by printing up money because eventually adding more money to a system devalues it or hyperinflates it and the effects are the same as if they'd have increased taxes or increased, increased interest rates you'd have been left with the same nevertheless so they're using it I think I think that sort of manipulation that sort of corruption and fraud um, seems to flow along all policies and I think somewhere along the line this uh, you know increase or um, in, in our global climate in temperature is is somehow fitting in that grand scheme of theirs anyway guys I'll leave I'll leave a you know a link down there if you want to support the um, the research on this channel I hope that some of that I've talked uh, in in the making of this video has um, resonated with you and as always guys I'll say what I usually do bye for now be safe.